In His Church Today. Welcome to the Marisburg Christian Church Podcast, where we bring you the inspiring messages preached right here in our fellowship at 82 Topham Road, Pelham, South Africa. We are under the leadership of Pastor Merrick and Prof. Tidi Habile. Prepare to be uplifted, challenged, and empowered as we delve into the Word that's, and discover that's, that's its that's transformative honest, yeah, power. Yeah. All right, read. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Yes. That will I seek There are after. things that you must desire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delight yourself in the Lord your God. He will give you what? The desires. The desires of your heart. That's it. Desire certain things. And God will offer you that. And they must come from your spirit man. They must come from your soul man. They must come from your mind. Imagine these things. Think about them. The heart there is not this heart. Please, this thing is designed to pump blood, nothing else. Not desires. It doesn't pump desires. It pumps blood. You don't bleed desires. You bleed blood. Amen. And so, when the Bible says it'll give you the desires of your heart, it means whatever is loaded in your spirit man, in your soul man, in your mind man, in your imaginations, in your thoughts, God will offer you that. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse number 20, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly far above that which you can ask or imagine. The word think there in Greek is imagine. Because all of us, when we desire things, we imagine them. Because that's where vision comes from, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. And um, already those who are, uh, since nearly were imagining husbands, you know, they will get them, but we must delight in them. I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about people who are imagining. Amen. Bless the Lord. Their husband. They will get their husband. Hallelujah. So, by, by implication that, you know, Ben Kulea and Agizolib Soup. Huh? Eh? Tutu? Kunjuban Kamalak. Last week. So we took invited. So delight in the Lord your God. Delight in man. Delight in the Lord your God. Don't delight in your your own self, but delight in the Lord your God. I, I'm being honest about this. You see, people don't understand that God is a giver of the things we diligently seek him for. You must you, hey, you, you mustn't help God to get what you need. You must believe him to give you what you need. Because if you help him, whatever you are helping him with might be below the standards he has for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I look at it from that angle. And, and and that's why when you believe, you 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 activate, you you open up, you open up his uh, his mind and his heart, and so delight yourself in the Lord. The desires of the Lord, the, your desires can be met by you desiring God. You desire God first, and then God looks into your heart, your soul man, your mind man, your thought man, your imagination man, your spirit man, to check what's in there. And then he discovered what's in there. And then he responds towards you. Amen. Bless the Lord. And so, one thing. Some of us have got too many things that we are trying to bring before God. Bring one thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, a truckload load of needs. Yeah, just bring a teaspoon need. Teaspoon of needs. Who's born in faithfulness. I can get a teaspoon. Then you can trust him. In the track. Because some of us may want to bridge our faith by seeing him doing things in a particular way, manner, time, thoroughly. And so once he has answered me in that space, then I know in whom I believe. Then I become fully persuaded that he is able to keep and do the things that I trust him with. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. That's very important. That's very important. And some of us don't move with previous experiences with God into the next unknowns. 
You want to step into the unknown without the known. Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, yeah. And so it's important for you to be like Israel. Where Moses in Deuteronomy says, which nation has God like your God? Now, here's the thing. You must have experienced that God. You can continue to know him, even when he begins to do new things. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he doesn't speak to people he has never done things to and say, behold, I'm doing a new thing. <laughs> he will talk to you who has done things for before and then say, okay, I'm done now with that. Now. I'm beginning things you've never known. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Are you with me? Uh -huh. It means I'm opening a new page, chapter of the same God that you've been doing it. Because he's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know who is clutching on this exhortation. Because... I had not thought it out. Never had I planned it. Amen. And then the Bible says, let me dwell in the house of the Lord. You see, the sanctuary is a very important space for you and I to experience the extraordinaries of God. Sanctuary. Now, when you are in the sanctuary, don't dwell in the sanctuary forever. Now, you say, okay, wait a minute. David says, I shall dwell in your house forever. It simply means I will never abscond. They are planted in the house of the Lord. Verse number 12. Yes. But they flourish outside. Are you with me? So when you get into the sick place, you dwell for nourishment. So that nourishment will lead to flourishment. Because you can't flourish without dwelling. Yeah. You can't flourish without being nurtured. Yes. And so when you come to church, it's part of your dwelling practices. Yeah, yeah. Because if you were to stay here, you'd be counted absent on Monday at work. And yet, work is also a sanctuary. Because you are taking God to your field of impact. Are we together? Wonderful. All right. Uh, our, uh, our lesson is around uh, the vision of God's God-ordained. God-ordained unity. Vision of unity. Let's cut this whole thing narrow. Vision of unity. Amen. Now, read quickly. Oh, excuse me. Um, John chapter 17, verse number 22 to 24. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Isn't that beautiful? I spoke to you last week, just constructing the whole story about glory. One of the biggest and greatest vision that God has about unity is glory. Is that you must participate, not just witness it. Because much of the Old Testament people were witnessing his glory, but very few participated in it. It is one thing to witness glory, it is another to participate in it. It is one thing to desire glory. It is another to participate in it. And God wants you to participate, to be part of his glory. Now, this glory, the Lord talks about it in verse number one. He talks about it in verse number five, as we did uh, intimate last week. And if you can just quickly re recall so that we can walk very slowly jesus spoke these words lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come that's right it is 
a glory for a specific dispensation. It therefore means that it is not like any other glory. Oh, Some is not with me yet. I, I, are you feeling this? It is not like any other glory ever. It is the glory of this hour. It is a glory specific to a particular time. Particular circumstances. Particular conditionalities. Particular situations. Oh, I'm not hearing you. It means you can actually, regardless of what you are facing, fall back on what he prayed for. It means what you are facing doesn't have the power. And I'm going to use a very small word. To attenuate what he prayed for. Now that you're struggling what it means, I'm going to explain it to you. So that's your birthday gift from me. It simply means to weaken. Yeah, to make it light. Isn't it nowadays because people are so-called uh, so interested in our health, then they will talk about um, talk light, coke light, sprite light, uh, uh, zero. Zero what? Coke zero, yes, thank you. And what else? No, no, they'll, call, they'll say coke. No caffeine, no sugar. Yeah, it's 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 increasing. One of these days they will say no water. I don't know what will be. People are imagining things. Are you with me, someone? And we're becoming creative all the time. AI tie. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now, there is nothing that can make God God light because He comes in His Majesty. He comes in his full weight. And that is called glory. There is nothing about God that lacks splendor. Oh, you're, you're not hearing me. There is nothing about God that, 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 that lacks majesty. There is nothing about God that lacks might. There is nothing about God that lacks power. If you call upon the name, you are calling power. You are calling glory. You are calling majesty. You are calling his immensity. Are you with me, somebody? Uh-huh. And so that's why when actually you pray, don't pray ritualistically. Pray revelationally. Have a revelation of who God is. So that when you step into prayer, it's not routine. It's not a ritual. It is you going into a summit meeting with the one who is, the one who was, and the one who will always be, and who will never change. He says, I am God, I change not. Are you listening to me? And so, uh, the hour has come. Remember in verse number 22, the Bible says what? And the glory with which you gave me, I've offered them. How many of you know that glory? I, because he says he has given it. So, I asked a very wrong question. I'm supposed to ask and say, how many of us? So I don't exclude myself. I'm part of the question. How many of us know that glory? Many of us are participating in that glory. How many of us are experiencing that glory? How many of us belong in that glory zone? He says, What you gave me, I gave them. And so your life cannot be defined by any other thing except what he has given you. 
And you can never be defined by what presupposedly he has given you unless you have experienced it. And you continue to experience it. Because it is only what you experience that you can express. You can't express what you're not experiencing. You can't talk a language that you are not it. Yeah. Yeah, one. Somehow, a little bit, not much, my dear baby. The Lord has, what's what's my life sharing it, my dear baby? Ah, I love that. Give me a high five. Bless the Lord. Now, listen to what I'm saying. I can speak several languages. I can hear some. And you can never gossip me with all. But I'm not good in others in terms of expression. I can talk back, but I can internalize. And that's the challenge here. But sometimes we internalize the things that God gives us, but we can't express them. And so people don't know that actually you are me. You are identifiably legally and legitimately so. You are identifiable with God in your life. Because you are not expressing that identity. And I'm not talking about walking like as if the whole rain that is available in heaven has fallen on you. Go back. This is very mean. If you let the gospel according to Lady Smith Black Mambaza. That's what that's what that gospel preaches. In his kingdom. And call it holiness. And call it righteousness. Folks who are busy walking around self-effacing. Wow, that's a very beautiful word. <laughs> walking away from who they are. Pretending that they are actually humble. When there's no humility in it, but there's a bunch of ignorance. Aya. Are you with me, somebody? Uh-huh. And it is not self-denial. It is self-deprivation. You are depriving yourself. Unity, in its essence, it is to reconnect us to who God knows us to be in him. To who God knows us to be through him. To who God knows us to be for him. Are you with me? That's right. And so, you cannot be anything. That's why... That verse is true. Without you, I am nothing. It doesn't mean that you are zilch. Are you with me? You're zero. Uh Uh It means without you, even if I appear to be this, actually, I am empty. Because real fullness derives from what you give. Oh, someone's not with me here. Real fullness derives from what? I can get from you. Oh. Then the Bible says, it is that oneness huh, that affords us that blessing of glory. So God's vision about unity is that when you're united with him, glory must flow into your life. Yeah. You know, Splendor must be part of who you are. Yeah. Come on. And it does not mean that probably you put more glossary on your face. No. Splendor is not glossary. Glory never hides itself. That's why when Moses stepped into the presence of God, he couldn't back I'm out with something. Until those who looked at him pleaded with him that he covers his face. Because when you get in touch with God, there is definitely going to be a change in your life. Hallelujah. 
Amen? Are you guys all right? Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You don't just experience that for experience sake. You experience it for expression's sake. Isaiah 43, verse number... I know you love this one. Isaiah 43, verse number 2. No, no, 1 and 2. Probably 3. And then jump to 19. That's your favorite one. And then you can go to 21. That but is, now... That is my favorite one. Mm. Go for it. But now, thus yes. says the Lord, yep. who created you, O Jacob, mm -hmm. and he who formed you, O Israel. Do, do, do you see this thing? Mm. That there are processes through which you and I get taken. Now, let me say it in terms of the New Testament. And the New Testament is basically what? Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 10. That's the New Testament of that expression. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus That's right. for good works. Are you with me? Created. You are created in Christ. So it means you have been born, yeah. but you have not been existing in Christ. So God had to create you in Christ through the process of John chapter 3, verse number 3 to 5, and verse number 8. Thus be born again. In the process of Titus chapter number 3, verse number 5, you were re regenerated, you were renewed, you were, you were do this. They, 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 they talk about three re's there. Are you with me? No. The whole assemblage, when God assembles you for him, that's the start of the process. But that's not where he ends up. He says, I created you, Jacob. And then he says what? I formed you. Formed you who? Oh, Israel. Why not Jacob now? Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, because from creation, Israel must emerge. You're not hearing me. Yeah. You are created Israel, but you must progress. Sorry, you are created Jacob, but you must progress to be Israel. And producing Israel takes formation. But creating Jacob, it's an instance. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, Jacob is created. You're created in Christ. But now, for you to become Israel, there must be formation. So that you now are not just created in Christ, but you conform to the image of who Christ is. Are you listening to me, somebody? The creation makes you one with him. But the formation starts producing the virtues of being one with him, the excellencies of being one with him, the power of being one with him, the glory of being one with him, the riches of being one with him. Are you with me, somebody? The investments of the spirit must continue in your life designed to reconnect you and recycle you so that you can reproduce. Because unless there's recycling, you're unable to reproduce. And recycling means you're being changed from glory to glory. In the same image, the image does not change. The standard does not change. But it is the quality. Through your progression and your walk with the Lord. That now must bring out the in it. Are you with me, somebody? And there are things that you must, I must be exposed to that are going to be at work within me, both to will and to do the things that please him. Somebody who hears that say amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Verse number. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, he they shall not leaves, overflow you. He never leaves nor forsakes what he has created. He never leaves nor forsakes what he is forming. 
Because he understands that there will be experiences to negate what his intentions and his purposes are with you. There will be things that are going to negate the vision of why he's creating you. The vision of why he's forming you. And so, if you're going to pass there, he will stay closer to you. Because if he's not close, you ain't going to be able to pass. His closeness in your life. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he doesn't talk about closeness. He says, he shall be in you. He shall be with you. He shall be upon you. That's how it is. Three-dimensional. And so, when he does that, it's because he fulfills different roles. The upon role is for functionality. And actually, the grace of that functionality, specifically in tedious times. So let me put it to you this way. It is a militaristic presence of God in your life. When his anointing is power for you to face situation. Oh, someone's not with me here. When Elijah, simple one, um, oh, by the way, thank you. I didn't know that you can sing. <laughs> Surely it's because he is upon you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Because I know after this service, it's Tatami Asot. Are you with us? <laughs> Bless the Lord. So, when, when, when he was upon Elijah, when he was up, what did Elijah do? The Bible says, Say it out loud, baby. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, you're the loudest girl in this church. <laughs> now, don't try to be humble, please. Say it out loud. He ran faster than Exactly. How can a human being run faster than horses? <clears throat> it is because the hand was upon him. There are things that you are going to outrace. <laughs> Because the hand is upon you. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the glory of him being upon you will find expression. Amen. Depending on what circumstances are you confronted by. Yes. If you must outsmart horses is a military thing. This is not July handicap. I'm not talking July handicap. We're talking an entire king. Oh, it doesn't say horse. Because if it was saying horse, it would have meant only his chariot. Horses. So he was together with his military attach. And so the hand came upon Elijah. Such that even the military attachment, he did not fear. When he saw what was against him, God gave him majestic presence and majestic performance. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord for that. There will be times that are unlike any other time in your life. But there's going to be majestic revelation. There's going to be majestic expressions. There's going to be majestic performance. There's going to be majestic presence. Because the hand of God is upon you. And the glory of military capability is going to show itself through you. When Ahab came for Elijah, it was not a jolly good thing. He was marshaled by his diabolical wife. Jezebel, come and kill him. You need the hand of God upon you. Who has to deal with Ahab and his horses but to silence Jezebel? It was when the glory of him being upon you is beginning to work. You don't just Overcome what you face. You overcome the sponsorship. Come on. Come on. 
of what is against you. Yeah, yeah. You overcome the sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. No. Sponsorship. We don't win the war, we're fighting. We, we win where the war comes from. That's why the Bible is very clear that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You never hear me. You never hear me praying against altars because it is what I see. Hmm. I pray against the sponsor. Was the power to address the sponsor has been given to us. The Bible says, he has created the designer of the weapon. No weapon prepared against it. What you see facing you is unable to win against you because he's already dealt with the designer. The designer of the weapon. Oh, and so if you do not know the glory of being united with him, you start where you shouldn't start. And you reduce yourself to realms and places where you should. You don't really belong. And it is only when the revelation of knowing the vision of unite of him uniting you with him. Right. That you realize we are in a different space. I just said we're in a different space. We are in a different space. He says, so that where I am, there shall they be. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever? John 14. In the night and I, it is where the Mazgaka to say, Kolo ni min kolo ba. Nobody was dead here. Jesus was alive and well. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm telling you, Baba. Zeno Kolo Lambla. Yeah. Oh, I get it. It's on Tunoga. John 14. You know the story. In verse number three, or what? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Ah. In my father's house are many mansions. No, leave the mansions. Leave the mansions. You'll soon. Make them verse three. Mentions, yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, no, I don't want that one. Verse. Check it out there. Let me see it quickly. I'm the one who's not fair to you. All right. Where does it say? Where I am. Verse 16. Yes. And I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father. And he will give you another helper. So that? That he may abide with you forever. Uh-huh. And then verse number 18. I will not leave you. Because of the comforter. Yeah. There's no way I will be absent. Okay. Okay. So it's not only unity with God the Father, God the Son. It is unity with God the Spirit. And that's the vision there is that I will not be absent. Yeah. 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 If the Holy Spirit is there, it will mean I'm there. So don't treat the Holy Spirit separately from me. Don't treat the Father separately from me. We are one. And so we are calling them into this unity. The vision is, I should never be upset in their lives. That's the vision of the unity. The unity will make it impossible for me to be absent. It means whatever they are going through, I will be going with them. Are you with me, somebody? Ah. And then Paul, catching that revelation, expatiates on it. If you read 
Yeah, Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 15, if not 14. Amen? Um, go for it. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with We don't have. Our don't, don't look for what you don't have. There are too many of you who are looking in God for what he is not. So you want to recreate him into what will fit your pressures, your anxieties, your troubles, your fears. Huh. God is. That's why he introduced it. He said to Moses, Moses, go and tell them, I am has sent you. The word I am elaborated in Hebrew is he is who he is. So go and tell them, he is, is with us. He is, yeah, boy. Huh. It's a continuous identity. It proceeds from eternity. When it comes to today, he is. When you rise up tomorrow, he is. It's you who has changed days. He has not changed. He has shifted with your changing days. Oh, you didn't hear me. He has shifted with your changing circumstances. Uh, he adapts himself as he is. Not let me be. When the circumstance emerges, he is. He has been waiting for it in eternity. And he has been waiting for you to lock on to who he is. So let the circumstance arrive. He is. Not anything is what. Anything is. The intention is that anything is. The intention is that you actually internalize. So what is defeating you? It is because you are not connecting to he is. Yeah. Because if you connected to he is, the glory of him being would express itself through you. I want to finalize this thing, so we need to be fast. You promised that you're going to take 10 minutes. How many minutes did you take in this thing? Huh? 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 Don't point at other people. I was not talking to them. I was talking to you. Yeah, so for that reason, you are banned ever from celebrating. Because you are taking God's time in the time of the church. All right, read. Read, read, read. Same. Hebrews. Yeah, yeah. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Yeah. But was in all points tempted as we are, yeah, yeah. yet without sin. Uh -huh. Now listen to this. Verse number 18. Of John 14. John 14, yeah. verse 18. I will not leave you off as orphans. I will I come. I like the word orphan. The other translation says comfortless. It's dodging the matter. The original word, even in Greek, it's ofarnos, meaning often. There's a specific thing why the Lord used that identity. An orphan in that culture is somebody who never had a father. Now watch this. Even if you had a mother, but as long as you didn't have a father, you are considered orphan. Because they never ascribe virtue to a woman. There's a spiritual connotation to that. Let alone the, the physical. Because a woman, spiritually, is the church. So if you have a mother, you are just the church without a husband. Because only husbands were given the authority to be their cavalry. That's why the Bible says, husband is head over the wife. Not over the woman, over the wife. Huh? No, no, it's really. Huh? Yeah, I will shoot in and best fazani. You are nothing. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you come out here with a low self-esteem. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any demonic spirit of low self-esteem and low self-image because you are married to another and his name is Jesus, not Musa. 
Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. And so, if you were called an orphan, it meant you have no teacher in life. Because a father was designed to be the one who designs the teaching material. That's what the Bible says in Malachi. When Jesus comes, he will reunite the hearts of the sons to the fathers. And the hearts of the fathers to the sons. And I thank God in the natural now. In the natural. I thank God for the mothers who have raised great sons. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a bigger hand clap of praise. And I want to thank God for the sons who have found a father in God. And therefore, they are not angry with the absent father. Because he says, I will be a father to the orphans. Fatherless. That's what an orphan is. Fatherless. And so the teacher, that's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy, that the hearts must be connected with God. Chapter number 6, 5 to 6. And then it says, uh, read it. Verse number 7. Deuteronomy 6, verse number 7. <laughs> you see, the story of the woman of Shunem, uh, comrade, is a very important story. Here is the importance. When the boy died, the father sent him, sent him to the mother. That's not supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. The father was supposed to pray for the boy. The father was supposed to carry the boy. Huh? And in life, we thank God for mothers who can be trusted with what is dying. With what is losing efficacy. And so, ladies, if some husband has left you for whatever reason, don't start uh, swearing. Has land, Jalain, she didn't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You understand what I'm saying? I don't know what you have about your daughter. She's, she's model C material. Yeah. All right. Are you with me? I'm not sure this. Deuteronomy 6 verse yeah. 7. Yeah. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Is it talking about mothers? No. Exactly. Because in those meetings, mainly men attended. And so fathering means rearing, discipling, teaching, developing, equipping, empowering, becoming a model and example. Of the things you believe in. So when Jesus says. I shall not leave you fatherless. Meaning I shall not leave you as often says. I am not an irresponsible. Father. You know I gave birth to you. He's the son. He, he recognizes the father. He says I'll ask the father. To provide another me. So, so that you have a teacher. Times two. A double anointing, which Elisha asked for. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word often means you are clueless. You are lost at sea. You are a desert material. You don't know the north from the south, neither the east from the north, from, from the worst. And 
Consequently, you can't move one inch going nowhere. Because in whatever direction you go, that's why Moses said, he was talking to your father, unless you go with us, we're not going anywhere. Because we understand ourselves as your children. And we're under your tutelage. We're under your guidance. We're under your leadership. And so venturing beyond this would be walking cluelessly into danger. Oh my God. And that's why the Bible says in Psalm 100, number one, uh, 105. And I think it's, it's, it's what verse? Verse number 15. Yes, it's verse number 15. That when they passed through Og, he was there. When they passed through Shihon, he was there. And because he was the guide. He rebuked them and said, touch not the anointed of the Lord. Do my prophets no harm. Are you listening to me, somebody? And so, when you are brought the vision of God, when he brings you into unity with him, he is bringing you into unity with fatherhood. He's bringing you into unity with the teaching capabilities of the almighty God. That's why people when came to Jesus say, teacher, oh my God. Because they knew if they walked away from him, they would never walk clueless. They would never walk directionless. They would never be lost. Bible says in Psalm 119, verse number one of, your word is lamp in my path. Yo, oh my God, no, no, light in my path. Your word is lamp to my feet. The steps of the righteous are guided by God. Because he does not want you to get lost. Come on, somebody worship the king of kings. You are never brought into unity with God and look miserable. I'm not a miserable guy. Never. Never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a time in my life in 1982. Oh. Yeah. When, uh, when, uh, when I literally did not have things. Now me was. It was 1982, not his 82, mine. <laughs> the Lord will help you. Yeah. Hey, you need help. But I think this lady, you know, she's a source of sobriety. You know, ever since you met this lady, you look sharp. Ah, bless the Lord. Give me a high five, babe. Okay. Amen. Bless the Lord. In 1982, and literally, most literally, we were lacking. I lived with my grandmother, not with the gentleman who was here. They assigned me to look after her until she... She passed to glory. So we didn't have food. We didn't have bread. And I trusted God to provide. And she looked at me quickly after many years of work and so changed because there was a time in their time when you would never be a pension member. The gentleman who was here worked for 30 years without pension because they were not allowed be pensioner, only white because we're allowed to have pension. And so it was the end of her life. He pieced together whatever was called a pension that never lasted because it was very short change. I mean, she was the first nursing personnel in the first family planning clinic that was ever established in the country. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1947. And so she came in, worked, loved what she did, but she didn't realize that there will be a time when she had to go. And so she went away with nothing. And so they sent me during the time of nothing because God's times are very interesting. Huh? And so I went there with nothing in the times of nothing. So you had to learn how to trust God. Yeah. Because even plenty can be nothing if your plenty can do nothing for you. Yeah. 
those who had money, those who had whatever, when the famine struck, there was no food to buy, but there was money in the vaults. Until somebody who was united with God stepped into the fray and said, Tomorrow. God is calling this whole scenario to note now. Tomorrow, this time I'm talking about, there shall be more than what you have ever imagined in the marketplace. And unless you are united with God, you can't have the revelation of declaration. Deuteronomy 6. Yeah. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, uh -huh. and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house you know and when are, you walk. There are things to converse about, not to preach about. Yeah. Things that you actually converse about. You talk about. You don't preach about. You don't prophesy about. Yeah, in the eras of prophets, everybody is prophesying. Even if there's nothing to prophesy about. Because some prophets, not you, you, you guys are very annoyed. Some prophets, you know, prophesy even the things they don't know. Elisha says, run to that woman of Shunem. The Lord has not revealed to me what's troubling him. So Elisha did not pretend he knew everything. And yet he was an anointed with a double portion. He was, an, he was a prophet with a double portion, but he knew absolutely nothing. Yeah. And he confessed it. He said, I don't know. The Lord has not revealed it to me. All right, let's pass. And so, you know, I, I digress too much. Read that sentence again. The last one. You shall teach them diligently yes. unto the And so, children. there are things to talk about. There are things just to sit down. Have your family, your family uh, get together. Huh? Sit down and just converse. Don't become too serious on your faces and be threatening. The one dodgy mask of holiness. No. Converse of neck. If you're serious about life, you can say certain things under circumstances that look not serious, and yet what you're saying is the sword of the spirit. Mm. It penetrates deep to the dividing asunder, bone and marrow, soul and spirit, bringing to the fore the hidden things. It's a conversation. It's a lovely one. I don't harass people. I don't shout like a mad fool. Just converse. Converse. Conversation. Somebody say conversation. Conversation brings revelation. Yeah. Conversation brings revelation. And so, when you talk about these things, they are going to come. Why? Because you are united to the source of knowledge. Many of us read Jeremiah 29, 11, and we know it off by heart, but we have never read one chapter in Proverbs. And we wonder why when the plans that God has for us fail, we can't recapture them. Because we don't have the wisdom of walking in those plans. Amen. You know the plans, but you don't have the wisdom. Amen. Oh, somebody's not with me here. And yet when the anointing is upon you, the wisdom to walk in the plans must begin to function. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go back then and then we finish. Yeah. Hallelujah. John 14. John 14. Yes. 
verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. Uh -huh. I, I will come to you. Church, to be united with God is to be united with his virtues. Virtue as a father, provider, protector. Virtue as a teacher, guide, equipper, educator, enabler, trainer, developer. Virtue as a guide. Somebody who knows the way before he starts it. Because he's already consumed with the destiny. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. So there's no way the children of Israel would have been lost in the desert because he had pronounced the land of milk and honey before he, they even left Egypt. He didn't talk about the land of milk and honey after the Red Sea. He spoke about the land of milk and honey in Egypt. And he then said to them, I am going to give you a glorious exit. When you go out, you have never confronted your oppressor. But when you start going out, go to everyone who has got gold, who has got sheep, who has got this. Tell them, give me that. Why? I am. He's redefining you. When you get connected with the one who redefines you, you acquire splendor that makes your enemy to be your friend. Makes your depriver to be your provider. Makes your oppressor to be your servant. I'm serious. And so, by virtue of us having it come out of apartheid, the church is supposed to be flying high. It's not. Because you guys have located freedom only to the spiritual side. You don't understand that there was not only the falling of the fire from heaven, but there was also the starting of business activities. Those who had property, they sold. Oh my God. And they made money. The money, some of it was brought to the feet of Apostle Musa. Are you with me somebody? Mm -hmm. Then there was no lack, a community of successful people. There was no lack within the redeemed. But when the Holy Spirit flourishes, and you understand what glory are you connected to? The glory of finishing when the circumstances are awkward. He says, behold, I'm the one who causes you to be rich. He means you don't have the ability to be rich. I cost you. Because I'm tied up to the covenant I made with Abraham. I said, I will bless you. You shall be a blessing. And anyone who blesses you shall be blessed double times. And anyone who tries to curtail you shall be cursed. Are you with me, somebody? Covenant leads forever. That's why Paul, when he teaches the church and the redeemed of the Lord, he says in Galatians, you are of your father Abraham. Because this is a new community. He's not talking to Jews. He's talking to the born again. He's talking to the church because the church is made of both Jews and Gentiles who are washed in the blood, who are renewed by the washing of regeneration of the word and the renewal of the Holy Ghost power. Somebody say amen. And so when you don't know what it means, if you don't have an understanding of the vision of God's unity, you're only going to operate in the spiritual realms only. And yet, and yet, the anointing is not to leave you fatherless. Yeah. He says, he speaks closer than any natural ability. Hey. He thought was out as an as an abnagger. And I'm saying he speaks closer than any other person. No, 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 no. We don't become vengeful. We walk in revelation. 
And when the situation appears, look at it and walk away. And in private, say, you stick closer than any other material need. If God be for me, who can be against me? Are you with me, somebody? Yes. And so we walk in the glory that he envisioned if we're reconnected to him. He never envisioned failure. He never envisioned defeat. He never envisioned depression. In the name of Jesus, we bind and cast out any spirit of limitation in the area of depression. Be gone in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Take authority over every infirm spirit and attitude that seeks to exalt itself above her. We know Jesus Christ. You are called to be united in his glory. Are you with me, somebody? All right, let's finish with the last reference. It's not possible for us to finish this, this beautiful thing. I said read Isaiah 43, isn't it? And then we ended up on top. Go to verse number 19 and then go to verse number 21 and then we're done. Turn to somebody and say, he promised us last week. He promised us last week. That um, he's going to keep us until it's, it's done. That is going to keep us Amen. Yeah, when I'm done, I'm your thunder when the last of goodness. Wait, to the lane. Shame. Because it's oxys. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, read. Behold. Behold. I will do ah, a ah, new thing. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, hey. Don't say behold, and then you don't give us the chance to behold. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, anybody who says behold, they must give you the chance to behold. Yeah. I said, behold. I said, it's a behold. Read again. Behold. Behold. Are you with me? Don't read the Bible in a lousy man. If you really are serious about what it has for you. It said in, in Psalm 1, behold how good eh? Pleasant it is. So, for brethren to dwell in unity. So, when the Bible says, behold, look for the good. Yeah. When you see it, say, praise the Lord. Yeah. Take that good to the Lord and pray for it and praise him for it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do anyway. So, that's why I can sit with you for ages. Sit around you for ages. As long as the things that should be in your life have not come in, I don't move an inch. And when I see them coming in, I walk away and say, Behold, I can see them, Lord. If any man is in Christ, is a new creation, behold, old things have passed. Have the ability to behold. The reason why you cannot appreciate in your life is that you're not a beholding type. Sure. Yeah. You, you're a knickknacks type. Sure. You believe in snacks. Sure. Snacks Christianity. You know? A snack Christianity is the Christianity that is looking for what is current and what is, uh, you know, in the market. <laughs> if this is tasty, brother, then I go for it. And if it loses taste, I look for another thing. And once I'm with this and somebody says another taste, I jump to that. Ah, you're snacking. But if you're beholding, you get arrested and you internalize your appetite and your concentration in the thing. Why do you think I'm still in the Lord? It's because I behold things. In his perfect law of liberty, I behold them. I look for things that up until today, some are working on me to set me free from, because it's a perfect law of liberty. So I need to behold in this mirror. I must behold this mirror. So I can be changed into the glory that this mirror is presenting. Amen. 
Huh? Very quickly. Behold, I will do a new thing. Uh -huh. Now. I know you love that. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Huh? Behold, I'm doing a new thing. <laughs> Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Oh, how we lie. We use the Bible as a recitation. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Up above, the sky is so high, like a diamond in the sky. Oh, ah, science. Yeah. I remember in standard one, I won't tell you the A, the year, because you'll hold me to it. I remember in standard one, this young man stands, uh, yeah, a guy, and he had requested that he comes up towards the last. Was he thought that when the the bell goes, even when he recites, the teacher will say it's dismissed because she was strict on time. But this time around, she had read her bananas. And so he was busy pushing himself to the back because those who were reciting were here in front with Kalala Pambina. So Muaz Tawiyaz Nabayako, you would have to rush to the back. Okay. And so now she followed, followed. And when he arrived at him, he had only memorized the first four lines of that. So he stood up and he went outside. He went outside. He said, This guy is very brilliant. When he said, Stop, the teacher said, Stay. Because he was looking at the watch, it was towards time. So he would go to him and go outside. And look for the stars. Nina and Sari sight, Nina. And that's Luto. My recitation. Because it's on Caesar God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Fun. Behold, I will do a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Now it shall spring ah, forth. It says, I'm doing a new thing. What is that new thing? What we should worry ourselves about. And watch in verse number 20. What does it say? The beast of the field will honor me. My God. Because of this new thing. Even nature itself. Will come and say. You are great. And he's not doing it to nature. You see where he's doing it. You see what that thing is. But the impact of what he'll be doing. Will cause. Any man to come to him and say you're great <laughs> already the donkey that spoke in the time of of Joshua eh? was it Joshua huh? but, but, um, yes that, that, that prophet yes the donkey that spoke in the time of, of that prophet had already showed you that given a chance when God is around town they will have a voice yeah. So he says, I'm going to step in and do a new thing. I see that one as the one that really acts me a little bit. And I'm going to finish, please, baby. Don't worry about Musa, who says, I take 30 minutes after I've said I'm finishing. I'm going to take 30 seconds. Is the one where the Bible says to Habakkuk, a prophet, I will do a thing in your time. Even if you are told it, you shall not believe. And I think that's the problem. Because when God does things, animals see them. But the human beings miss them. Read. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh my God. Mm. What that simply means is I'm changing the economy. When he says I'm making a road in the wilderness, it means there will be trade emails that have discovered the highway to exchanges. So you're not talking about being, you know, a tenderpreneur constructing an entry or what? 
entry is constructed for trade. How many trucks, you economists were in this church, leave the port in Devon, going everywhere per day, except during the time of these rascals and stupid fellows who were taking bribes in order to process trucks. And then so many trucks, how many were they? 700. Huh? Or 70,000. 70,000. Trucks standing. You know when 70,000 trucks are standing, it means the economy is grinding to a halt. Because somebody says, I will not process your truck unless you do me good. And that's what we need to pray for, for God to do anything. Uh, yeah. So that the highway will be open. The highway of train. I don't know how Christians pray politically. Huh? Pray for MK or this or the other little thing. Get into power. Pay for what you're going to benefit from, regardless of who is in power. Because God can do a new thing. That even if human beings don't believe in it, don't see it, you hear these folks talking on television. I said, why are you still on the television when you're so pessimistic? When you're so tough in your brain? Sorry, man, it's a small word. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah, and so this, this thing is important for us to know that we are of the new thing. And when we come to the doer of new things, we find ourselves partnering with him in bringing about newness. All right, wait. The beast of the field will honor me. Oh, my God. I love that. Because even, did you know that when men blind us, animals suffer? Now, I'm, I'm now not being political. We went to Zim uh, with this uh, lady here. And we went to that other area where you know there are many elephants. But when the economy in Zim started floundering, the elephants were dying. That got nothing to do with elephants, that everything to do with elephants were in power. Hmm. You didn't catch me. Yeah. And they were blundering in the citadels of power. Animals that had nothing to do with ideology were suffering and they were dying. And so that reduced tourism. Guys, you think God is a fool? No. When he creates things, he's creating them for your good. Animals are for your good. He said that in Genesis number one. Everything I put it under your power. You shall have power on the birds that fly, the fish that swims, and everything that creeps and crawls on the surface of the earth. You are responsible for the economy in three worlds. Oh, somebody's not with me here. And so when he says, I'm doing a new thing, he says, I'm renewing the entire thing because man has failed me. Huh? And so animals started, thank you, God. How? Oh, what's the worst? What's the seas about? Yeah. And that's an indictment to those who are brained. When nature must suffer because we not, don't make the right decisions. Read. Turn to somebody and say the vision of God's unity. It is to connect you to glory. Yeah. In all spheres of life. By the way, servants of the Lord. In all spheres of life. And unless we bring ourselves to revelation, knowledge, and understanding, and wisdom, we will not know how to functionalize the glory that is already embedded within us. The glory of thinking. The glory of ideas. Oh. God, someone's not with me here. The glory of creativity, the glory of innovation. I say this thing, uh, Yolisa, because you are a very brilliant uh, young lady when it comes to some things, not all of them, and some of them. Why should a continent listen to a country? Your leaders in Africa are called by the Chinese 
You've got probably 11 cabinet folks sitting around the table. You've got 11, 17, 20 African presidents listening to a bunch of you short people. Are you with me? Yeah. And yet you are a country. You are a, sorry, you are a continent. There's something that is wrong. Glory has departed. The glory of thinking. The glory of sensitivity. The glory of stewardship. Oh, when you get united with God, unfortunately, even Christians, even Christians, when they become presidents or whatever the case might be, they fall to the same rubbish. You know the guy who was in Zambia? Huh? Chiluba. No, Chiluba. Chiluba was our Assemblies of God guy. The chap was in Malawi now. I was with him at the university. Lazarus Chakwera. Huh? President Lazarus. I'm not, I'm not lying. I've got a photo with him. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before I went to Unizu, yeah, I started, yeah, one is very quiet. I started, uh, I started at Teflon. Yeah, so when I come to your school, I was already some. And so, when Christians get to power, don't think that they're going to think properly too. Because after Chuluba came out, scam manifested. Really. Because I give waters in the wilderness uh -huh. and rivers in the desert. Guess who's giving? It's God. Because he knows where the waters are. So there's no wilderness with him. The wilderness might be caused by our behaviors, but he knows where the roots are. He will go. If you connect with him, you can be an Elijah that says, wait, it's time for you to come. Or someone's not with me. If you connect, we're talking about economy when we talk about water. We're talking about life and efficacy when we talk about Ezekiel. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Now you think that this was just a, a bunch of bones somewhere? Cadavers? Huh. No. Says you, God knows. Says, thank you. I was waiting for you to say that. Now I'm going to tell you what I know. You tell them. That's what I know. That if you tell the bones, they will leave. You've said, I know. Thank you very much. Tell the bones to leave. There is there can be restoration when the right people are connected to the right God. There can be revival, there can be restoration, there can be resumption of a fetus. God is not irresponsible, He will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, you recite this Musaba when you are passing through. A place like Kolokono he will never leave me nor forsake. So, see, conditions that are extraordinary. Why, when, oh my God, can you please calculate my time now? You're the MC here, please. That's why when, when, when David speaks, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh my God, do you know that statement? I shall not want. A king in the first place is not supposed to say that because kings don't want. If they want, they go for another king. Boom, they take it. So he has, First Corinthians Chronicles chapter number 29, don't go there. He says, I've got gold, I've got silver, I've got this. He's not talking about some vault in a bank. He's talking about provinces. Where a province was dedicated to his gold. A province was dedicated to his silver. A province was on Natal. That's how rich that guy was. He says. Oh, I just said I had. Actually it's not mine. It was yours from the beginning. But you have trusted me with it. Then when you come around, you say, you are kings and priests. 
but you don't have gold. You don't have silver. Even if you've got gold. But the one who knew he had gold, he said, I've got gold. Oh, even when I walk through the valley overshadowed by death. I don't talk to my Overshadowed by death. I shall fear no evil. I shall fear. No, there's no evil for me. Evil and safety. Gafan, 609, Gafan. Are you with me somewhere? So you must understand who you have, who you are connected. Then the way you portray becomes different. You actually start creating your own safety net. Your provisional sources. Are you with me somebody? Ah, let's finish, let's finish. And then the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, you lead me. There are some times when I'm, I'm thirsty and dry and run. I don't know which pastures will meet my actual need. There's a young man, I don't know whether he's here. He came last year, last week, and I prayed to the Lord that he comes back again. Are you here, sir? You met me after, after the service. If you're here, just lift up your hand so that I don't preach about you. Huh? Are you here? He's not here, so I'm going to preach about it. Thank you. So if you are shy, I'm already preaching about you. So he comes to me. Okay. He comes to church. He's supposed to go to his church. He comes to church. And then he walks around aimlessly at the car park. The Lord touches somebody in the service. He says to him, there's a man who's walking aimlessly in the car park. Go fetch him. Did you know that? Yeah. Happened last week. So this guy lifts himself up, goes to the car park. He sees the man, he goes straight to him. He says, can I help you? The guy says, I was going to my church. And... As I was on my way, a voice said, go to MCC. He says, I turned and I came to church. Now, as I'm here, I'm battling because I must be in my church. But I've got issues. And I am so down. This one says, let's go into church. It's in church. We preach. We don't know nothing. Only God and his prophet. They were busy with this thing. After the service, then he comes to see me. When I look at him, there's a big story. Now, because I couldn't serve my Jesus. Yeah, put the sign up here. This got the sign. This one says in course. Content as us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes the Lord wants us to deal with issues, but if you honor man's program, you are going to miss the appointment. So you must understand that when God does a thing, he will do things in an unusual way. He's not going to wait for your programs to come off. Verse 21. These people I have formed for myself. Yes. They shall declare my praise. That's the new thing. Uh -huh. okay. That's the new thing. When those that are formed for myself connect with me and declare my, my praise, praise, then even animals will recognize it. Yeah. Nature itself. Will begin to open its voice. Yeah. <laughs> it's when I reconnect with the people I've formed for myself. What is the verse upstairs say? Verse number two. Or verse number one. And he who created you, O Jacob, uh -huh. and he who formed you, O Israel. That's it. When God forms you, the new thing. The thing that brings across the sense that you never imagined can happen. 
we don't believe that the church is on defeat terrain. Defeat comes when we're ignorant. Defeat comes when we're fearful. Defeat comes when we don't walk in revelation. Defeat comes when we doubt ourselves. Step into areas and arenas where you are singularly lifting up Jesus in your life. Make him king even over your fears, your anxieties, your apprehension. Huh? Make him king over your ignorance. Make him king over your misery. Don't, 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 don't pretend you're not miserable. But tell misery, you are not my king. You don't rule over me. Don't pretend you're not afraid. But tell fear. I don't have your spirit. I have a spirit of sonship. I have a spirit of a sound mind. I have a spirit of love. I have a spirit of power. There's nothing I engage on and I am weak. And when you confess these things, you bring out the reality. You create reality with your mouth. Tell everything is standing against you. Low self-image, low self-esteem. Tell everything. Tell bitterness. Tell hatred. Tell grudge bearing. Tell unforgiveness. You are not my king. There's somebody who rules in me. I'm a free man. I'm a free woman. I'm a free young man and I'm a free young man, woman. Are you with me, somebody? Connect with the glory of the unity God has called you to in him. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Marysburg Christian Church Podcast. We pray that today's message has been a blessing and a source of strength in your journey with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do remember to like and subscribe to all our pages on all our social media platforms 